This is Paint Life TV, I'm Chris Idaho Painter. In this video, I'm gonna give you a whole long video on how to epoxy a garage floor. So if you wanna know all the steps, the tips and tricks to epoxy in your garage floor from the cleaning process, the acid etching process, the caulking of the cracks process, the applying the epoxy, throwing some flex down, clear coating it, I've got it all right here for you in this video. So sit back, relax, grab yourself a soda a bag of popcorn or a beer and let's epoxy your floor here we are inside of a garage right here this is a previous epoxy floor that i did about 12 years ago i'm going to talk to you talk to you about how i write uh wrote this estimate how i write estimates now uh if you don't have a great estimate package it doesn't matter what number you're gonna give pretty much, you're probably not gonna win the bid. When you give an estimate to a client, they're gonna set it down after you leave, have your estimate on the table, and they're gonna probably gonna have three or four other estimates on the table. And if you don't have a professional looking bid packet that's gonna convince them to choose you, you're probably not gonna win that job whether you're high or low. You can be the highest bid on the table, and if you have an amazing looking bid packet, they might choose you, because that bid packet is a representation of the work you're going to do. I do make my bid packets available on paintlifesupply.com. They're editable and not edible. If you want to check them out, I have interior estimate packages, exterior estimate packages, decks, fences, epoxy floors. Go check them out at Paint Life Supply Co. after you watch this video. But now I'm going to get on to this estimate, how I wrote this estimate and how I write estimates, you know, uh, now and in the future. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk into this uh, this garage right here and I'm just gonna measure this thing out because I just have a very simple, basic way that I write uh, estimates for epoxy floors and it's just a square foot price. But I do have additional charges that go on my base square foot price. My base square foot price is $4.25 a square foot. Now I have a garage and I've got multiple squares in here. I'm gonna measure this large square out. This square comes out to 20 by 21. I'm gonna multiply those two numbers together and that's gonna give me the square footage of this section of the garage. I have another section of the garage back here and this is three and a half feet by five feet. I'm gonna measure, or I'm gonna uh, take those two measurements, multiply them together, and then I'm gonna add that to this number, and that's gonna give me my total square foot. I do have a smaller square back here, and this is approximately a six by 14, and we're just gonna call that one square foot. I'm gonna add that to the, the, um, the total number, multiply it by 425, and that's going to give me my base price for my epoxy floor. Then I'm going to look and see, do I have any additional charges? I've got steps over there. I charge $175 additional to do steps that go into a house or wherever, wherever those steps are leading to. It's $175 because that is additional work. It's additional epoxy. It's gonna take more than just doing the flat surface of the garage. So I'm not gonna just, I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time measuring it out. It's just $175. I also have, an additional charge if this if this garage floor the concrete is really contaminated with oil contaminants and stuff that i got to do a lot of cleaning a lot of etching to get those oils and contaminants off i do charge an additional 200 dollars to do any type of additional cleaning most about 90 percent of the the uh, uh, garage floors i do are garage floors on new homes so they don't have any contaminants on them at all or they're usually really clean and uh, maybe just an oil leak or two on them and the, the acid etching process, which I'll talk about a little bit later, you know, gets that up. But $200 for any additional cleaning that is just above normal, uh, just cleaning the garage out. Another charge I do have is for raised footings. This garage has some very low raised footings right here, and uh, those do take work. I always, my raised footings or stem walls and stuff that are raised up the concrete, I always uh, epoxy those raised footings. I've got some really small ones here. I'm gonna add, add just an additional $50 for those raised footings. I got some, another job I just recently did that had some really tall ones. We'll show you those. I'm gonna add a, an additional $175 for really tall raised footings. I really like to do my footings too, so everything just has this seamless flow to it. The next additional charge I do have is for doing color flex. Now, there are occasionally people want color flex thrown out on the epoxy floor, and that's done 
on the second coat while it's still wet, you'll throw out your color flex. The color flex do need a clear coat that goes over the top of them to seal them down and to give a smooth feel, them, feel to them so they're not rough. I charge $1.75 a square foot for throwing out color flex. Um, after my second coat and that includes the color coat. So you just take your square foot price that you're throwing the, the flex out onto um, or your square foot total times by $1.75 and that will give you your flex price. When it comes to color flex, the color flex don't give that the epoxy floor this really, really smooth feel. I like the up here in Idaho because when the cars pull in uh, in the wintertime, you usually have snow built up under the cars, which has um, road debris built that and sands that you know come tracked in. They melt, fall on the floors. It gets and make your floors really dirty. It's really hard to squeegee them out or um, dust mop them out if you have a rough floor. And the color flex, color flex, if you don't clear coat them add a certain roughness to the floor and even if you do clear coat them it does add you know some roughness to the floor that makes dust mopping and makes um you know mopping and cleaning the floor itself wet mopping a little bit more difficult i just really like one colored floors that are smooth easy to dust mop in the summertime and easy to um, wet mop in the wintertime when you got a lot of road debris. When it comes to the, the process that I go through of doing an epoxy floor, one of the first steps I do, I'm gonna come out to the job site and I'm going to acid etch the floor and I use muriatic acid, undiluted. I'm gonna spray the, the entire surface of the concrete with muriatic acid and I'm gonna etch that floor really, really good. And if you don't understand the acid etching process or the epoxy process, I got multiple videos, uh, multiple series of videos on epoxy and floor that you can go watch in the acid etching process. But I'm gonna acid etch this floor, I'm gonna rinse it all out, and I'm gonna let this floor dry for a day, and I'm gonna come back the next day, and my bid includes uh, caulking all the saw cuts in any minor cracks in the floor. And I really like caulking the saw cuts and cracks because especially here in Idaho, once again, the water falls off your car from on um, the snow. Uh, it gets down in these cracks with road debris and these cracks fill up with all kinds of grime and dirty stuff. Uh, the cracks are also a harboring place for bugs, um, spiders, ants and stuff like that. Caulking the cracks makes it easier to mop, easier to clean your floors and you don't get any um, ants and bugs down in those cracks. If there's an excessive amount of cracks that I have to caulk, I'm gonna charge um, an additional $75 for caulking uh, an excessive amount of cracks. This garage had a, just a few minor cracks in it, and I do actually caulk the edges where the concrete meets the stem wall or your raised footings. I caulk that too, and also at no additional charge. Some of you may ask, you know, what caulking do I use? I use a product from Tower, and it's a urethane caulking. That's what I do all the caulking with, and the the epoxy that I use to epoxy my floors is a product that's called Tileclad 2 High Solids, and it's an industrial uh, two-part epoxy, and um, it's a great product. I've been doing the method of acid etching using Tileclad for 22 years, never had one callback in 22 years doing the process that I do, and I know to some, it, it takes a little bit longer. There's a lot of products out there. There's water-based coatings. You can do multiple coatings in one day. I just been doing this process that works for me, and I haven't got a callback on it, and and um, it's just been you know, a great system that I developed. So the epoxy itself, the coating, my bid, I come in, I do the acid etching, let it dry, come back, do the caulking, let it dry, I come back and do the epoxy. I do two coats of tile clad too. First coat is thinned down with um, reducer 54 to get myself a nice good bite on the floor and get a good coat that's gonna adhere really well. I like to thin it out and um, I also like to roll my epoxies. I know some of my friends that do um, epoxy floors, they spray them. Got some other uh, friends that do them using squeegees. I like to use a roller um, and I use a mohair roller. That way I can push it down into the concrete and get a really good bite. And I think it's part of why I've never had any good um, or any callbacks or any fails, your failures on my epoxy floors. This is the Idaho Painter. In this video, I'm gonna be applying an epoxy to a concrete floor in a garage and we're gonna show you the steps that it takes to actually apply your own epoxy in your own garage floor. So stay tuned to this multi-step process. 
So the first step of this process is actually going to be uh, using a muriatic acid to actually etch this floor to get it rough enough so your epoxy, when it's applied and dried and cured, it won't actually peel up off the floor. And we're using a muriatic acid, a pump sprayer, and some other tools to actually go through this process. There's a multiple different ways you could actually prepare your concrete to actually accept the epoxy, including sanding. But I use a muriatic acid. I've been doing it for about 15 years, and I've never had a call back on one of my floors actually peeling are pulling up so the process works for me and I'm going to show you this process right now. And there's a few tools that you're going to need and one of them, uh, some of the most important things are safety equipment. I use a pair of clear goggles so I don't get any muriatic acid in my eyes. I use a safety mask which a chemical filter uh, is on it. I got a two gallon pump sprayer and then I got my muriatic acid and then I got my hose set up out here with my power washer outside the garage ready to go. Okay, I've got all my safety equipment with me. Got my power washer set up out here. I got a hose. I'm going to pre wet all this concrete first before I start working in the garage in case there's any spills or anything that goes wrong. So I want to have all this concrete wet out here and then I'm going to apply my acid in there. I'm going to dilute it in the garage and then flush it out here and it'll all be completely diluted and we'll just flush it right into the grass. And we're getting ready to. I started wetting this concrete down. I'm going to continue wetting it down. Once I get this all wet, I'm going to get my muriatic acid loaded up by pump sprayer. I'm going to have this hose sitting right here in case anything goes wrong, I have access to the hose. So I'm going to begin this process. I'm going to start adding some water to my pump sprayer, getting that all ready. And I'm going to test my pump sprayer out first before I actually start adding the muriatic acid into the sprayer. Once I know my sprayer is functioning properly, I'll be begin adding the acid. I got my acid here all ready to go. Got my safety gloves. These are solvent rubber gloves right here. Definitely want to have some gloves on, your eye protection on. I've gotten muriatic acid in my eyes before and it hurts pretty bad. So you don't want to get it in your eyes. You want to wear protection. And I'm just, I got just a little bit of water. I probably got about two quarts of water in this two gallon sprayer. Now begin adding my acid in here. It's got a little plastic seal that you're gonna wanna break on here and be really careful pouring it in. You don't want it to splatter on your, if you get it on your clothes, it'll eat your clothes up too. What I've done with these containers, I'm gonna rinse these containers out really good and then I'll dispose of them. Just gonna add a little bit more water here. Once I start applying the acid, if it's not eating the concrete enough, then I'll pour more acid in here so it won't be so diluted. Now I'm gonna begin the process of spraying the acid. I wanna have a hose at my ready inside this garage in case anything goes wrong or I need to rinse any of the acid away and get it you know out of here quickly and if I if I'm spraying the acid in here and I walk out on the driveway for some reason I got to go to my vehicle or something to get something and you have acid on your feet it'll leave footprints out there where it etches the concrete so you want to you know rinse a path where you're actually going now I'm going to start applying my acid. I'm going to start in the back of the garage. I'm just going to be working my way to the front. Once I get the acid all on the whole floor, then I'm going to rinse it out. Okay, here I'm going. I'm ready to go. Got my mask on, safety glasses, rubber gloves, got my boots on, and we're going to start this acid at you. When applying this acid, 
Wow, wherever the um, tire tracks are where they come in the garage, that's where you really want to etch it the most. If there's any contaminants, also spray a lot right there to really get those contaminants lifted up and etched out. But pay really good attention to where the tires come in. That's where you really want it the roughest. Also make sure you have it well ventilated. I got both garage doors open and the other garage. If you got windows and stuff like that, make sure it's open too because you need a lot of ventilation because there's a lot of this chemical and you don't want to breathe this stuff. It's pretty nasty. Now I'm done spraying the acid with my weed sprayer and now I'm going to begin diluting this acid with my hose that I got set in here right at my disposal right up front here. So now I'm going to actually start working and diluting this acid. I'm going to start at the very front of the garage. I'm going to work my way back and get a lot of water in here to dilute that acid. Then I'm going to turn around and start flushing it out. Now I've rinsed it enough, start flushing it up. And you want to rinse it to the point you don't see any of that yellow color anymore and that bubbling. That means the acid is still active and it's etching the floor. You want to get it flushed up, you don't see any yellow anymore, then start flushing it back out. You want to make sure you clean all of your equipment really well now. Rinse this all, your boots off, your gloves off, rinse your sprayer off, your empty buckets of muriatic acid. Just Clean those things out so there's no more acid in them. This sprayer has a little pressure relief valve. You can lift that up so I can open the, the sprayer up so it won't splatter acid up in my face. Now I got my acid tools all tool cleaned up. Now I'm gonna begin the power washing process using a turbo nozzle, cleaning this thing out really good and that's also gonna help the etching process. So I'm done. Now I'm done with this rubber hose here. I'm just gonna hook this hose of water up to my power washer and begin the power washing process. So this power got my nozzle here. This is a turbo nozzle right here that's a rotating nozzle. And these nozzles are really good for really etching the concrete and stripping stuff off this concrete and cleaning it. There's gonna be a lot of concrete dust and stuff created uh, and silt created by the muriatic acid. So you really gotta get that out of the pores of the concrete. And the only way to do that is a turbo nozzle and then a pressure washer that has at least 3,000 PSI. Got my pressure set up, uh, pressure washer set up out here. So here I go, I'm gonna get ready. One more thing, don't forget to check out my clothing line, Paint Life Paintwear, where you can purchase my t-shirts and hats to help support the making of new videos. And thank you for watching my videos. So when you're actually doing this power washing, make sure you're really paying attention to where the tires actually come in and really etch those with the power washer really good. Anywhere where there's any oil spills or anything like that, really clean and etch that really good too. And just work all this debris out. Also the cracks, all the saw cuts, we want to power wash those out really well too because we actually caulk those cracks before the actual epoxy process. So there you have it. There's the first step of this process of epoxying this floor. I've got it all acid etched. You want to make sure it's acid etched and really rough. If you don't get that floor rough enough, you are going to have a problem with your epoxy peeling up. And then I got it all power washed. Now I'm going to let it dry. We're going to come back and do the caulking and then start the epoxy. This process of caulking this floor. And I like using a product from Sure Whims called Surmax. We're going to be caulking the saw cuts and the cracks. And those saw cuts are deep cuts and, and they actually collect a lot of dirt and a lot of ants and stuff like that will come up from them. If you caulk them, it'll keep uh, dirt and debris from falling into it. It'll keep the bugs out of it and it'll actually make your floor look a lot nicer. So here we go, we're gonna start caulking it. Just using a regular caulking gun and this Surmax caulking that has worked really well for us in the epoxy that we use. So now we're starting this process of caulking the cracks and when we apply our epoxy to our garage floor, the epoxy doesn't want to be anywhere outside of the garage and so you don't want your caulking to extend uh, from the saw cut outside the garage either. So I'm going to mark exactly where I want my caulking to end 
and I can see where the garage, the garage door comes down and our epoxy is going to end on the inside edge of the garage door. So my caulking is going to end right about there. I'm going to mark that just so we don't accidentally extend the caulking beyond that mark. We're just going to begin, you know, caulking our cracks and making a nice, clean, smooth uh, caulking fill down inside the crack. So we're working right along just filling these cracks or the axle, the saw cuts in this concrete. I'm just, just going along, squeezing my caulking gun, caulking trigger, just filling it up and then just going over it with my finger, wiping it smooth and you don't want to have anything, any excess all over the concrete because you have any excess on the sides and ridges and sloppiness. It's not going to, going to show through in your epoxy. So you want to wipe it smooth and clean and I actually keep a wet rag with me and, and it actually helps wiping it and smoothing it out. One of the tricks to actually getting a nice fill in your saw cut or cracks, cracks is actually cutting the tip of your caulking tube just right. And you want to cut it, I like to cut it at a 45 degree angle and you want to cut it big enough so it's actually pumping out enough caulking to actually fill that whole gap. Because if you don't fill it up, then it's um, going to create bubbles and it's not going to expand and contract with the concrete properly, it'll actually separate and break if, the, if there's any expansion and contraction in the concrete. So get a 45 degree cut and a large enough hole in your caulking tube that you can easily fill that crack or saw cut fast. And then I like to take my wet rag, keep a nice clean finger, just Rub it over there in the wet rag, your wet finger will actually smooth out the caulking a lot easier and make a nice smooth bead. Also while caulking, you can see we've got Greg here in the background. He's sweeping and actually just dry scrubbing the floor with a broom and that's helping loosen some of the, um, the silt that was left back from the power washing and cleaning process and just lifting up some more of that stuff out of the pores and then we're going to take a blower and blow out the garage floor prior to applying the epoxy. So I got a brand new tube of caulking right here and I got a caulking gun right here. It's just got a hole right in the side of it and that actually is used to actually cut your tube. If you don't have a caulking gun that has a cutter in it, you'll just have to use a knife. So I'm just going to stick it in there and put it right where I want it, set it at about a 45 degree angle and just cut my tube just like that in a 45 degree angle and big enough where enough caulking is going to come out to fill this gap. When I'm actually caulking these cracks, one thing I do like a caulking gun that actually has teeth on it. And I do have a video on the types of caulking guns that I like to use and some of the features that I actually like. Some of the other areas that we like to caulk, we got up against the steps, there was a, a crack and a gap right there that we actually caulked up against our footings. We caulked up against the footings and any other types of small cracks in the concrete, we caulked those all. I'm now ready here to um, mix my epoxy together and the epoxy we use is a two-part industrial epoxy and you're going to have a part A and a part B. This is part B and then we've got a part A right here and part A is actually the color itself and we're going to take and mix, um, there's a label covering the A but that's just, um, there's two, there's four together right here, part A, part B, part A, part B and then we also got a thinner right here on our first coat of epoxy. We thin our first coat, that makes it absorbent into the concrete a lot better. We've got a measuring cup right here to measure out our thinner which is a reducer 54 to thin our epoxy. I've got some rubber gloves because I don't want to get the stuff on my hands. I've got just a throwaway brush that I can scrape out my gallon cans. I've got a way that I could actually mix it and then I've got a lid to put on my five gallon bucket while it's sweating 
and the sweating process is actually mixing part A and part B together and allowing it to sit and activate. And you want to take and read the instructions on your, your epoxy, your two-part epoxy, and make sure you allow it to sweat the proper amount of time so you get the, the hardness out of the epoxy coat before it, uh, or after it, after it dries. So now I'm going to show you this part of mixing these two together and then we're going to go apply it on our floor. So we got part B right here and this is the clear one, just dumping this in here. If you want to see my previous videos, part one and part two of my video series, at the end of this video I'll have them posted where you can just click on the video and go back and watch part uh, one and two. And I got my throwaway brush right here. This is just to scrape out everything out of these gallons to get everything out of them because this stuff is really expensive and I don't want any to go to waste. Now I'm going to begin adding my thinning compound which is reducer 54 and I like to uh, typically reduce it about 10% and what I'm going to do is I got uh, four gallons in here which is two kits of epoxy and I'm going to add in what I like to do is typically add in two pints of reducer 54 and that's going to make it thin enough to absorb a little bit better into your concrete on your first coat. On your second coat I don't add any thinner or reduce my epoxy at all. I'm going to begin mixing it up with my drill. Got a drill with a mixer right here. And then once I got it all mixed, I'm going to check the time and then per my instructions, I want to make sure it sweats for at least that amount of time. Right now it's 2 o'clock so I'm going to wait until it's time before I start applying my epoxy. Okay, now here we are, I got the garage floor. We got our product all sweating, and which is the actual process of mixing up the A and B of our two part epoxy. And the sweating is the activating of those two parts. And our uh, epoxy that we're actually using, it takes a half hour sweat time. So it's been that half hour. Now we're gonna begin on our floor, begin rolling it on our floor. But prior to that, we wanna blow out any dust or debris that's on our floor, scrape off anything, walk around the floor really, and look really closely at the floor make sure there's no uh, glue or anything on the floor. There's a lot of times on your garage floors there's carpet glue and new construction when they're doing the carpet. So check for any glue, any caulking or anything on the floor that you don't want to epoxy over and scrape it off. And then blow this thing out really good. And then we've got to actually chalk a line where our garage doors go down because we don't want the garage doors to set on top of the epoxy. So you want to determine where your garage doors are, chalk a line, run some tape, inch and a half tape, and that will make a nice line where your epoxy will be and we're going to begin that process right now. So now we got our line chalked. We got it masked off to make a nice crisp line where the garage doors go down. We're gonna begin rolling the epoxy. And I like to have two people. I like to have one person doing all the cut-ins and footings around the edges and then another person rolling. And I'll be rolling and I like using just a nine inch roller with a mohair nap and it's just a little thin nap. And that's what I like to use when I'm applying my epoxy. The uh, person doing the cut-ins is just using a four inch nap with a brush just throw away tools that way when we're done with the top epoxy we just throw away all the tools even your nine inch roller it's gonna get epoxy all over it and it's pretty much gonna ruin the roller so don't use anything expensive because we just throw it all away so here we go so we're gonna be starting in this far corner We've got John he's gonna be doing the cut-ins it's a good idea to have some rubber gloves so you'll get this epoxy on your hands and it's really nasty stuff you don't want to have to clean it off with chemicals so get yourself a box of throwaway gloves or just some some rubber gloves that once you get it on it that you can throw those gloves away too. 
then have an extension pole long enough. I like to, I like to use an extension pole about this size because you're going to be rolling square to square and laying it out. So you need an extension pole that's going to reach far enough so you can do your layout. So here's a few tips. We're just working right along on this floor and John's doing all the cut-ins and I'm doing the rolling. In the first coat, what I'm trying to do is just roll it and put enough pressure because I want to actually push that epoxy down into the pores of the concrete and get a really good seal and a really good bite. So I'm putting a lot of pressure and I'm not worried about laying my first coat out. My second coat is going to be really important to lay it out to get your uh, brush or your roller strokes looking really nice and get a good nice layout on it. But the first coat, the important part is just pushing hard enough and getting enough pressure and you don't want a really thick layer, you want a nice thin layer that's going to absorb into the concrete really well. And then when I'm rolling, I always keep my roller, uh, the point of my roller faced to my left side as I'm rolling and that way the actual um, the roller cover itself won't come off your roller cage. So I always keep it pointed to the left and that's just kind of a little simple little trick there. Another tip here is I'm just working right out of a five gallon bucket. I don't have a screen in or anything, but all, all my parts were just mixed into a five gallon, just dipping it in to that five gallon bucket and like rolling it out. And I just slide my bucket right along the concrete with my extension pole when I need to. Another good tip is if you're actually doing this epoxy floor for a customer, you need to close the garage doors, not all the way, but down a certain amount. So you want to make sure that garage door, if you don't have access to the house, that you can actually close the garage door. So you either have the code, but it's better to have it not where it goes down with the code, but just pull the little um, release lever so you can just slide the garage door, let it get down and set on top of a one gallon bucket or so. So make sure that you have access to get out. We just work our way out and then grab the garage door and just lower it lightly and set it on a one gallon bucket. So we're cruising right along here. We've got just this back end now. We're working our way out the garage. 
One thing is, it's a good idea. I've got a, an actual gallon of reducer 54 just sitting right out here in case something goes wrong. You need to clean the epoxy. Make sure you don't have any on your shoes. As we work our way out, we're gonna take our shoes off in case we have any epoxy on our shoes and they'll be just working in our socks as we work our way out the garage. Because what you don't wanna do is track any epoxy on the driveway out there because it's an absolute nightmare to try to get it off. And if you do, you wanna make sure you have the proper thinning product and the, the product we use, Tau Fat High Solids, it's uh, reduced with Reducer 54. So I got my last square here, I'm rolling. Gonna be working my way right off the garage with our last square here. Just make sure that you don't have any epoxy on your shoes as you work your way out the garage. Now I'm working my way out here, I gotta set my bucket. We're just gonna set a drop cloth right here on the concrete to set the bucket on. Because the bucket could have epoxy on it that you don't want to get on the concrete either. We're done uh, scraping this epoxy floor now. All the little specks and uh, debris that may have blown in with the wind or, or just were picked up with our roller. And now we're gonna blow it out with a blower and we're gonna begin applying our epoxy. Also today we're gonna be applying color flex. So we'll show you that process of applying color flex and we'll be rolling some of the epoxy and get some of it done. Then we'll be throwing our flex out and then rolling some more and adding more color flex. And we're adding a pewter gray color flex to this epoxy to give it some really cool depth and color. So we're beginning this uh, second coat process now. I've got my extension pole once again. Got a quarter inch mohair nap. That's what I like to apply the epoxy with. The epoxy's in our five gallon bucket that we sweat it in. And we're gonna start in this back corner right here and we're gonna work our uh, whole front end of the garage and then we're gonna throw our flax and then we're gonna move back to the next section. So here we go. Prior to starting our epoxy, we're gonna be wanting to run and a half tape line along the edge of our garage where we'll be stopping our epoxy because we want to have a nice straight edge. So make sure you run that one inch and a half tape. Now we're starting our second coat here. You know, we got John, he's going ahead and doing the cut ends and I'm going to be filling it in square by square. And we typically work square to square and that's where our saw cuts are and just tackle each square at a time. And this second coat, you're going to want to lay your epoxy out and instead of just rolling it on and leave it, we're going to roll it on and then we're going to go back and lay it out so that way it has a nice even coat. And once again, another tip when you're working, whatever direction you're working, you don't, the nap will have a tendency to work off if you're working away from you. So whatever, if this nap is, uh, or the roller is pointed in this direction, you wanna be working in that direction. If you work this direction, it's gonna have a tendency to work this roller right off the frame. So just be conscious of what way your roller is facing. I like to keep it facing to the left and I'll be rolling to my right and then I'll be laying it out. And you'll watch this layout process and we're gonna be working down this line and we're gonna be applying our color flex while this stuff is nice and wet, square by square also. So here we go. We want to get 
too far ahead, a little too dry. Now we just laid our epoxy out on these first two squares. Now we're going to start throwing out our uh, color flax to add this color and then we'll continue working down the line. So these color flax, you can just buy them either by the box or by the quart like this. And we just got a broadcast spreader. This is actually just a small fertilizer spreader that we got from do-it-yourself hardware store. And we're just going to uh, begin spreading them with this and we'll show you what that looks like. Now we've got a broadcast on two squares. We're gonna just the excess, take our blower and blow those excess right in to our squares, and then we're gonna keep moving right along. Now just one little simple tip, if you wanted to invest in a pair of shoes that you could actually walk on the floor, you could epoxy the whole floor, and then there's spiked shoes that you could walk on the whole floor and apply your color flex all at once. But I like to just, it's simple for me, I just, this is what I'm comfortable doing, and I just work one square at a time. And I've never actually used the epoxy spiked shoes before, because this is what I'm comfortable doing. I've been doing it for about 15 years and it works for me. But you can try a different method of uh, doing the flex yourself by uh, using the shoes. Another good simple little tip is have access to a lot of rubber gloves. Getting the epoxy on your hands and trying to clean it off is a real nightmare. So we just keep a box of these latex rubber gloves and, and they actually wear out pretty fast with the epoxy because it's pretty sticky. So I like to just have a whole box of them and that way I can just keep as they get rips in them, just tear them off and throw on a new pair. Now we're just working our way out of the garage, doing our last two squares. You see we got a drop cloth down here on the ground as we can step out and start to put our tools onto our drop cloth so we don't get any epoxy on the, out, the outer portion of the garage. We can set everything right there. We can take our shoes off, leave them right here on our drop cloth, and then I actually put a different pair of shoes on because this pair of shoes that I've been working with has got epoxy on the bottom of it now. 
This is Chris, the Idaho Painter. I'm still up here at my cabin in Tamarack doing some snowboarding, but I wanted to answer some of my questions to my YouTube subscribers, and one of them is whether they sh whether you should use a stain or a an epoxy. And there's just there's a couple differences between the two of them. And quickly, a stain is designed on new concrete. It'll absorb into the concrete, and it's going to still keep that profile of concrete. So the concrete is still going to be rough. An epoxy is going to create a top coat on the the epoxy, a real thick film, and the the, the concrete floor is, is going to have a nice smooth finish. So one you could mop out and clean out really easily. The other one's still going to be a lot like your concrete, except it's going to be stained. And it comes in opaque stains and semi-transparent stains. Your epoxies are just solid color, and you just pick any color you want and apply that color. And you know some of the differences between a stain and epoxy. An epoxy is typically more a lot more resistant to chemical than a stain is. So when you're driving in uh, in your, your garage, if you're using it in a garage, there's a lot of chemicals in your garage, including your brake fluid, which is a very harsh chemical on floors. So if, you're, if your um, automobile is leaking brake fluid, or you got oils, uh, antifreeze, some of the other cleaners and stuff like that in the garage, an epoxy is gonna be a lot more resistant and not get damaged or discolored from those chemicals. So if, if you got a lot of stuff that could possibly get on the floor, uh, you definitely want to put an epoxy on. What's easier to apply? Uh, they, bo they both really need to go through a nice good cleaning and etching process before you apply them. But an epoxy, you don't have to, uh, our, our epoxies we apply, there are two parts. You put them together, you sweat them, and they got to go through the sweat pot process. And the application process is definitely a lot harder, a lot more time consuming, especially because you got to do multiple coats and you got to wait for dry times, cure times, and all that. Uh, a stain is very simple to do. Any do it yourself or can do it. You just get your concrete etched really good, cleaned really good, and you just roll it on. And it's typically going to take two coats. The epoxy is very, very critical that you apply it properly. Otherwise, if you uh, don't apply it properly and you drive in and you're, you, for, for instance, get hot tire pickup and it peels off, then uh, you really got a spot now on your epoxy that's gone. And the epoxy, you, how do you actually touch it up? Because you got to sweat you know, two gallons together. And so it's almost impossible to touch touch up. You'd have to buy two kits. It'll cost you a couple hundred dollars just to do a little touch up. Now a uh, stain, if you get little spots here or there that uh, peel up or whatever, they're very easy to stain. You just have a little bit, a bit of extra or go down by another gallon and just roll a little bit on that spot. So very convenient for touch ups and uh, with a stain. And it's some of those are a couple of the differences between the two of them. We typically, uh, stains are really good for say, uh, a laundry room that doesn't have any flooring in it. Actually, in my house, my laundry room is a concrete floor, and I just stained it with a solid color stain. I don't want to go to the whole expense of using an epoxy in my laundry room floor versus a stain. Stain, just roll it on, easy to apply. So th those are some of the difference between the two. Outside, uh, epoxies have to be applied indoors, so if you want your color on your concrete outdoors, you've got to use a stain, and we typically use a stain from sure whims called H and see uh, stain and we're, we don't hardly ever use a semi-transparent stain, we use solid color stains. In this video, I'm gonna to try to answer a question or questions I've been getting from some of our YouTube subscribers and that's how um, we actually go about painting the floor and making it so it's not slippery. And what uh, these questions have been in regards to is by some of my epoxy videos and then my staining videos doing concrete. And if you do apply an epoxy coating to a concrete floor, it is going to become extremely slip, slippery and up here in Idaho where it snows and you're bringing in snow and a lot of water into the floor it could become slick. It's, I got an epoxy floor, it's never been a problem for me but some of my YouTube subscribers have wanted to know how they can uh, make their floors so they're not slippery after the epoxy on. And this is going to apply to epoxy floors and stain. We use uh, H&C stains to actually stain concrete floors too which is a lot less expensive than epoxies and it's, um, but it's not as durable and it's not as resistant to chemicals. Making your epoxy floor or stain floor uh, non-slick or non-slippery surface, I actually have this product right here. It's h &C. hopefully you can uh, read that from here. h and uh, it's a product from h &C and it's called Shark Grip. And, and it's a slip resistant additive right here. And all we do 
is add this to our product and you just constantly stir your product while you're applying it and it's basically like a silica sand and it just adds sand to your product and it's just right into your product so into your epoxy it's bonded right into your epoxy and it stays in there just pretty much for the life of epoxy with stains it's it wears off a lot faster but I have a pool a concrete pool deck and I've stained my pool deck multiple times and you start to build up the stains on it and so you start to lose some of the profile of the concrete and I got a little concerned that the concrete might get a little bit slick so I actually added this sharp grip to uh, the concrete stain on my pool deck. And I use agency stain, it's a solid color stain, can be mixed up in any colors and you can put it into an epoxy floor. I live in Idaho, I, my floors get wet, it gets snow in it, it's never slippery for me, I've never slipped and fell, neither my kids, neither my wife, and one of the drawbacks to adding this to your concrete is, or your epoxy, your epoxy has uh, got a nice gloss finish to it, it's easy to sweep out, easy to mop, and easy to clean when it's nice and smooth. Once you add this sharp grip, you can't just run a dust mop over it because a dust mop drags and catches on this additive, but sharp grip, this is one way to make your epoxy floor or stained or painted floor a rough and non-slick. And I, I actually like, instead of just putting it out on the floor itself, uh, I like just putting it on steps. And that's probably one of the most uh, common places that's gonna be slip is steps. I got steps going into my house and this would be a good alternative. I actually just put grip tape on my steps, black grip tape, so I wouldn't slip instead of this sharp grip. But Sharp grip from agency stain, non-slip resistant additive. So I don't know if you've made it to the end of this video, but we're all done. Now you can go out and tackle your epoxy uh, garage floor. If you got any questions or comments about this entire process, just leave it down in the comment section below. If this has helped you out getting um, on the way to coating your garage floor, let us know, give us a thumbs up. If you, um, once again, have any tips or tricks yourself about epoxy and a floor, just leave it down in the comment section below. We all learn from the comments. We all learn from each other and we would appreciate it. Hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell. That way you get notified every time I come out with a new video. And like we always say, we'll see you next time right here on Paint Life TV, out.